Uh, hi, hi, folks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean, aka Uncle Frogface, and welcome to today's video. If this is your first time here, then welcome. If it's not your first time here, then welcome back. Nice to see you. So today, I've got my hands on something that I've wanted to try for the longest time. So, I've got this lovely box here that I've already opened. I've actually had this for a couple of weeks, but a lot's been happening, so I've had to put this on hold. Uh, so I have two items in here. Um, let me just get rid of this. Okay. So the first thing I used in my last video, which I will link just here if you want to check that out, but this is Culture Hustle's Goldest Gold Paint. And oh my God, am I in love with this. So I bought this with a, a project in mind, um, which will be coming soon, but I, I had to use this for something else. And I'm so glad I did. I love this paint. But that wasn't the main thing that I bought. So I've, I've wanted this for so long. This is Black 3.0. So this paint has quite a long history. If you don't know the, the whole history between Stuart Semple and Anish Kapoor, then in brief, Anish Kapoor gained rights to Vanta Black, which was the blackest black substance using like aerospace engineering and all that kind of stuff. He gained rights to that from a science and technology company who obviously don't deal in uh, with artists or, or colours. Um, and Stuart's point of view, which I also share and I know a lot of other people share, is that no one should have a monopoly on colour. Colour is a naturally occurring thing. So uh, no one should be able to say, no one else can use this colour, which is exactly what Anish Kapoor did. So Stuart went out and made the pinkest pink, and then worked on the blackest black, uh, he has the goldest gold, the glowiest glow paint, all of these different things. Culture Hustle's paints are, from what I've seen so far, phenomenal. I love them. I actually reached out to Stuart with uh, an idea for a product myself, and we just chatted back and forward for a while, and we're still chatting now. He's such a nice guy. Um, so yeah, I had to, to try this paint. So. What I've done is I've collected together a random assortment of black art supplies. We're going to put them to the test against black 3.0. And then I'm going to use this in a piece. So let's turn the camera around. Let's do a top down and let's test out all of these supplies that I have. Okay, so here uh, are some of my supplies. I've got some just some black acrylic standard paints. This is Mars Black. I have some Winsor Newton Black India ink. I have some uh, lamp black gouache and a brush for that. I have the De La Rowney Simply Acrylic Paint Marker in black, which you'll have seen in the Squirrel Box unboxing if you've seen that recently. I also have a Sharpie Black Permanent Marker. I have a Tombow Water Based Black Marker. And of course, I have black 3.0. So let's move these all out of the way just for a moment. Okay. So I'm going to be using this, which is just an acrylic paper pad. It's got a canvas texture, takes paint really nicely. Um, so my final piece is going to be on canvas. So this will be a nice simulation of that. And all I'm going to do is go across and swatch each one out. So with the black 3.0, we have to leave it to dry for a while to really get the effect. Uh, but I'll talk about that when we come to it. So let's do a time lapse and swatch all of these out. So first things first, you might notice this great big splodge here. So this paint marker just shredded the paper. And when I tried to brush away some of the kind of loose flaky bits of paper, 
uh, it just smudged terribly. So that that's just what it is. The coverage also isn't very great. Uh, but now let's get to the main product. So like 3.0 comes in this lovely paper tube. And this is the actual paint. So do not eat, drink or get in your eyes, tattoo or paint your body or apply to hot surfaces. Super flat, super matte, ultra pigmented acrylic paint. Shake well for use, keep out of reach of children. Uh, so apply two thin coats on shiny surfaces, allowed to dry between layers. Thin with up to 40% water to spray, store at room temperature. So I'm, uh, I'm not gonna be spraying this. I'm not painting it on anything shiny. I'm just going to give it a really good shake. And Stuart actually has videos on YouTube on the best way to use these paints. And he says to use a nice soft brush. So I've got a nice soft brush here. And let's squeeze a little bit out. Okay. Right. I've now got some on my hand, so let's try and get that off. Okay, so that obviously looks very shiny but that is because it's wet. So we need to leave this to dry for about four hours and then we can come back. So Stuart actually says it gets darker and darker the more you leave it. So after about 24 hours, it should be at its darkest, but four hours should give us a good approximation of what we're gonna get. So I'm gonna leave this for four hours, maybe a bit longer depending on what happens today. And we can come back and see what this looks like. So this is four hours later and you can see that the black 3.0 is really, really black. So if we just go through one by one, so here's the acrylic paint and you can see, even though it's black, it really does reflect the light quite a lot. This is the India ink, which is not very opaque. You can still see some of the paper color through that and also reflects light. We have the gouache, which is nice and matte, does still reflect a bit of light, but it's not a very deep black. Not sure how much of this is coming up on the camera. Uh, the paint marker, the um, the Sharpie marker, and the Tombow marker. I don't think any of these are really suitable. But here's the interesting thing with this black 3.0. It is super matte. Uh, I feel like it's like a makeup ad. Um, but if I, so this is why I, I painted this bit on here so that you could really see the difference if you tip across the light. It just doesn't reflect at all. It looks like a black hole within the black paint. I'm so, so impressed. And this is already the blackest black I've ever seen uh, in a paint. And this will just get darker over the next 24 hours. So I have an idea of what I want to do with this paint. Um, I now need to go and teach for a few hours. So I'm gonna put this aside and I will come back to you after I've taught my classes and I'll be all set up and ready to go. So here we are, back, back, back again. And I have got my canvas. So this is an Arteza 30 by 40 centimeter canvas panel. This is pre-primed. And it's a nice smooth surface. But for my purposes, we are going to paint this all in standard black acrylic paint. So my idea for this was to basically paint the blackest thing I could think of. So in the universe, the blackest thing would be a black hole. I'm not the best at painting kind of galaxies and stuff. I love that kind of art so why not I'll, I'll give it a shot um, you know I love painting clouds and things and it's not that different I'm sure those skills are transferable so the first thing I did was just prime the canvas in black get it as smooth as possible and you can see standard acrylic paint just how much it reflects the light 
and actually this became such an issue that later I, I had to wrap a piece of paper around my light to stop the light reflecting on it. So here I've got my homemade stay wet palette. Uh, so this is just a, a plastic tray, a sponge mat and a piece of parchment paper on top and then my acrylic paints and this means that if this is going to take me a few days I can just mostly wrap it in cling film or saran wrap and it will stay uh, nice and moist. Uh, I hate that word, moist. Uh, and I've got some soft and some stiff brushes. Good combination of the two. So if you try to paint a standard acrylic paint onto black paint, onto a black canvas, it just won't show up very well. So you could see there, I used my palette knife and just mixed a little bit of white in with the color that I'm using. And that means that it adds a little something so that it will show up on black. And all I'm doing here is I'm just, with a very dry brush, dabbing in a bit of color, with a stiff bristled brush and then with a very soft brush I'm coming afterwards and just kind of sweeping across as Bob Ross would say a hair and some air and uh, just kind of giving it a nice fluffy texture and then coming in with a bit of water as well to take some of the paint off. Something I like about acrylic is that uh, you can work really thick and really in pasto or you can work in really thin layers and for this kind of painting nice thin layers work really well. So Galaxy, I wanted to get those nice blues and purples and the, a bit of red in there. So I'm transitioning from that nice blue to a kind of magenta -y colour. And then on the other side, we'll add some, some red just to give a bit of variety across the whole panel. But I'm just going to use this whole process right across the whole panel to get a kind of cosmic clouds blocked in across the whole thing. And there you can see I've done the same all across. We've got the red in there as well. So now just to add a little bit more interest in these clouds, I'm just coming in with a bit of watered down black paint and a very fine brush and doing exactly the same thing, putting in some spots and then going over with that soft brush and just blending it out a little bit. And it just adds a bit of variety and a bit of texture to those clouds. Um, I mean, this is all gonna be background information so I don't want it to be too textured, but a little bit of texture is nice. And again, we do that right across the whole canvas. And once it's dried, this is what it looks like. So I have got a trusty old used toothbrush. I'm a bit of a, an art hoarder and I'm just doing the kind of standard splatter effect to get some distant stars. So because this is watered down, this, this will be a little bit dull. Um, so what I'm going to do is paint in some more kind of um, bright stars just by coming in with a bit of neat white acrylic paint, no water, and just dotting in a few stars all over the place. And this, again, gives a bit of variety to the stars that you've got because not all stars are really bright. Some of them are a bit dull. Um, and it just gives a, a good kind of feel across the whole night sky across the whole space there we go so once that has dried I've come in and drawn a circle here so this is for our black hole Around the black hole, we have this kind of corona of lights. This is all of the light and debris and time and everything else that the black hole is sucking into its gravitational well. So what I'm doing here is I'm coming in with a yellow in a very light layers. And again, exactly the same way as we did with the kind of cosmic clouds. I'm coming in, just dabbing in where I want the color and then smoothing that out with the brush, with the, the softer brush and I'm building up layers. So I'll do a little bit, let it dry, do a bit more, let it dry, do a bit more, let it dry. And it kind of gives this cloudy, light, iridescent feel. And again, follow the, the kind of shape that you're using and you get these nice sweeps of clouds. So you can see I'm, I'm using a little bit more opaque color here. So a little bit less watered out and just building that up. And you don't want it everywhere, kind of build it up in, in little tiny sections and little parts like that. And you get that feel of kind of gaseous clouds massing around something. Okay. 
There we go, once that's dried, I'm coming in with a, a final layer on here and a lot more white in this as all of those stars and that stardust is collecting together, it's going to be much brighter. So a few spots I want to be really bright and I'm making it much brighter on one side than the other. Just for a bit of variation and, and kind of a bit of a, a nice textural difference. And just like we did with the clouds, I'm coming in just with a bit of uh, watered down black just to kind of add some striations through the clouds and again just putting in those lines and then brushing them out with that soft brush. I want this all to be very soft and light. So it's time for the main event for the black 3.0. So you can see I've drawn my circle back in there just with a, a normal HP pencil and I'm putting a little bit just on a, a little plastic lid and this amount that I've got here was too much for what I was doing. Uh, I ended up kind of having to go over a couple of times to use up that paint. It, the coverage on this is insane. It is so pigmented. You really don't need a lot to cover an area. And now with a steadier hand as I can, I'm coming in and just filling in our black hole. And my hope for this is this will just look like a void in the middle of the painting, uh, just like a, a black hole is. This paint goes on so smooth, so creamy. Um, I'm trying to keep nice kind of thin layers as, as Stuart recommends uh, in his demonstrations of the paint. But it's just a case of getting it down, uh, seeing all of my grey hair. <laughs> and then letting this dry, and really letting this dry for a few hours. And this is after four hours. You can see just how black this is. There's a couple of areas around here I think I was a little bit too thick so I'm going to go over that later uh, with a nice thin layer and just with a second coat just cover up those patches but most of this with a single layer is absolutely fine. So we've got this corona around the black hole I want to add the corona in front so black holes in, in a lot of kind of depictions have this swirling mass in front as well as behind so that's what I'm adding here. And we're doing that in exactly the same way as we did with the corona and the, the clouds around. Adding a few extra stars in there because stars get stuck in the gravitational pull of supermassive black holes. You didn't know this was going to be a science lesson as well, did you? Um, and again, just doing the same as we did before, just dotting in some. And then finally, just coming in with a little bit more black 3.0 and touching up a few areas. Um and adding a bit more detail to that, that front strip of cosmic cloud and touching up those bits that need to be touched up. So I'm so excited by this. I've left this for hours to get as dark as I can kind of leave it um, before showing you. And honestly, it's been less than 24 hours and this will get darker and darker up to 48 hours after applying it. Um, it's really hard to show with kind of lights and, and screens and whatnot, but you'll be able to see, even with light reflecting off of it. Um, so this is the painting, and if you see the light shining across, the blackest black just doesn't reflect anything at all. And I'm so excited by this. I, I, I like this painting, I really like this, and I'll share some pictures of it so you can get kind of a better look at the end but I'm excited about this for a different reason so my great-grandfather uh, used to invent magic tricks for the magic circle and there are so many kind of optical illusion things I can think of using this blackest black paint I've got an idea for something that I want to do I need to pick up a few more supplies um, but for a sculpture utilizing an optical illusion uh, so if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, definitely stay tuned, and that'll be coming out soon. Um, but this was so interesting, I really enjoyed this. I found a product that I can see myself just using again and again and again. And again, another Stuart Semple product that I, I just absolutely love. Um, so, as always, thank you for joining me, and until next time, goodbye.